In this video, I'm going to reveal how I achieve good FPS using a RX 6700 XT. I'll also be showing some settings that I utilize to keep it consistent to 40 FPS as much as possible. Keep in mind that these settings are due to change as new features are always coming out with AMD, such as FSR 3, which is something that I will definitely be using in the future. With that being said, we'll be using the AMD Adrenaline software to achieve the performance I currently wield. To start, open up the AMD Adrenaline software by right-clicking on your desktop and then open it by clicking on it. Then navigate to the performance tab and then tuning. Now to get this menu of settings, let me first go to what you guys are looking at, which is the default settings. And from here, click on custom and then enable each setting. Just like so. So first I'll talk about the settings on the right side and then I'll talk about the settings on the left side. Now starting with AMD Smart Access Memory. This is a setting that allows your CPU to access all the VRAM on your GPU and in this case 12 whole gigs of it instead of traditionally only being able to access a quarter of a gig at a time. Now that's really all you need to know about the inner workings of this setting and more importantly it can give you up to 15% better performance according to AMD. To enable it you have to go into the BIOS and enable two settings called above 4G decoding and resize bar support. Once enabled in the BIOS this setting should be available to you in AMD software, so go ahead and enable it after enabling the two settings in your BIOS. Below AMD Smartness memory is fan tuning. As the name suggests, we tune the fans on the GPU by adjusting the points just like this in advanced control. The best setting for fan tuning is all the points being at the top, meaning maximum fan speed anytime, all the time. However, as you can imagine, it can be irritating listening to a fan at maximum speed, so that's why we position the points close to 0 degrees Celsius, lowest on the graph, and we position the other points gradually higher. The last point to the right 100 degrees Celsius will position around 80 degrees Celsius while being at the top. Now with these last three dots in the middle, put them as high as you can tolerate and I'll put mine just like this. Keep in mind that if you opt for maximum speed anytime, all the time, you may need to change your fans with brand new ones much sooner as you'll be eating up the lifespan of the fans much quicker. I recommend turning on zero RPM mode as even the best GPU cooler at maximum speed won't take the GPU to zero degrees. So zero RPM takes advantage of that fact and reduces the noise of your PC by essentially turning off the GPU fans when your GPU is at a safe and low temperature. Below fan tuning is power tuning. As the name suggests, we can adjust the amount of watts the GPU uses using this slider. In our case, we'll just be maxing out this slider so we can have the maximum amount of power available to our GPU. Now on the bottom left side is VRAM tuning. As the name suggests, this is where we adjust the VRAM on the GPU. Enable advanced control and set the slider to the max and select fast timing on the memory timing dropdown. Lastly, we have GPU tuning. This is essentially where most of the performance is gained as we're asking the GPU to run more often in the same amount of time, resulting in things like more FPS and decreased latency. Now there are a bunch of ways to get the maximum and minimum frequency with the lowest voltage, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you the fastest way I know how to find these numbers near the highest value we can put them, give or take. First, we have to save our settings so far, and then we'll bring them back shortly. Click export profile on the right and save it somewhere where you can find it. I'll be using the desktop. Give it a name and press save. Now, we're just going to click the two of the three automatic tuning options, which are undervolt GPU and overclock GPU. Record down what numbers you get, and once you have these numbers, import the profile you saved earlier from the top right corner on the left, go to where you saved it, and then press open. Now all that's left is to put the undervolt GPU number down for voltage, overclock GPU number for maximum frequency, and the minimum frequency is 100 less of whatever the maximum frequency is. To summarize what we've done in the performance tab is that we overclocked and undervolted our GPU to push it as much as possible with the maximum frequency and gave it the least amount of power to do so so that the GPU will be cooler overall so it maintains performance for longer. With a new adjusted fan curve, it increased the normal capacity by cooling it more than last time as the default fan curve is very conservative. Lastly, Radeon Smartness memory opened up the communication between the CPU and the GPU, two degrees latency when lots of data needs to be communicated. And we max out VRAM frequency as well as switch it to fast timing that helps the GPU to keep delivering stable performance. 
Finally, we have to make sure we save our settings as every time we restart our PC, the adjusted settings get jumbled around. To fix this, we'll be exporting our settings again to quickly reapply our settings before every time we play a game or do things like editing a video. Just like last time, to save our settings, click export on the top right corner on the right, choose a file location, I'll be choosing my desktop, give it a name and press save. Now whenever you restart or turn off and on your PC, make sure to reapply your settings by importing them into the AMD Adrenaline software before playing a game or something that uses your GPU for better performance. That's it for the performance tab and now head to gaming, go back if you have to, and then choose your game. Here are some settings I use to stabilize performance and the first one being Radeon Super Resolution. Click on the drop down and enable it. I personally like the image being sharpened so I like setting it to 100. Keep in mind that for this to work, you have to set the resolution in game lower than your monitor's native resolution. I'm on 1080p, so I'll set it to 990p. If you want more performance, you can set the in-game resolution lower to 720p or 900p and fine-tune the quality using the in-game slider. Next is Radeon Anti-Lag and enable it, as well as Radeon Enhanced Sync. I would like to mention that Radeon Enhanced Sync will not cap your FPS to your monitor's refresh rate and will also reduce screen tearing drastically. I personally use a 240Hz monitor and see improved fluidity, but I have to admit that when trying this with a 60Hz monitor, it didn't work the greatest as each refresh is 60 milliseconds apart. It's better leaving a setting off when using a 60Hz monitor. Now that we have applied these settings, give your game a try and see if it crashes during a high stress scenario. I'll be testing the game Fortnite during a scrim which is a simulated tournament game. If it crashes, lower the maximum frequency and minimum frequency by 25 MHz along with increasing the voltage by 25 millivolts. Keep adjusting GPU tuning until your game no longer crashes and of course you may adjust the other settings as well. That sums it up for this video, but there is still more to cover about my PC that gives me the advantage over another PC with the exact same components. What those advantages are will be covered in future videos. And with that being said, make sure to like, share, and subscribe as I'm on my way to becoming a YouTube partner and only need three dozen more hours of watch time. Bye for now, and I'll see you in the next video.